Hi everyone. <clears throat> um, I thought I'd chime in and put my two cents worth in about Malaysia Flight 370. It is ridiculous that it's gone on this long. I don't believe that they don't know where it is. Uh, there's been all kinds of stuff said, all kinds of money spent, all kinds of vessels looking for it supposedly. Um, and then we've seen people say, well, some of the patent holders names weren't on the flight manifest list the passenger list and so on but they have the ability to change those lists I mean come on if you can hack into a defense department computer you can change a passenger list so the fact that you got a Rothschild involved with uh, high technology well Anytime a Rothschild's involved in anything, it's not good. So my thoughts on the matter are they probably wanted that technology all to themselves and they probably took that plane down and unfortunately for the relatives of all the people that were on it, I don't think they're in this world anymore. How they took the plane down, I'm not exactly sure. They could have remotely controlled it, commandeered it, and just crashed it. And then just drove it crazily. So that there would be all kinds of anomalies in the story and the search and etc. <clears throat> That's what I think happened to it. So, it's gone on so long, there's been other people that have chimed in about what they think and how this search to find it would, would go. One of them today was, or recently, has been the uh, director James Cameron, you know, and he's made several movies. Uh, the, probably the biggest one that he's made was, I guess, Avatar. And so a little bit about Cameron, and as you can see up here, he's on the NASA Advisory Council, and he's working on a project with them to put cameras on an upcoming manned Mars mission and he's raised money for the Mars Society and he lobbies uh, or raised money for them the Mars Society who wants to colonize Mars and he is uh, supposedly a great expert on deep sea exploration and you can read down in here about some things he's done as far as the deep sea goes and he's got the Deep Sea Challenger submersible and he went to the New Britain Trench a five mile solo dive and then in 2012 he re took the same thing to the deepest part of the Mariana Trench he got three hours exploring the floor and he's the first guy to do that solo so he likes to supposedly get into underwater things that are very deep. So they had a little article about Avatar <clears throat> mentioning him, interviewing him. Apparently they're working on uh, three more. But then you get down to the bottom of this article and then uh, he's asked, given your experience with submersibles, have you got any insight in the challenge of finding the missing flight? And this is what James Cameron said. Maybe it's not any different than what other experts have said, but he says uh, he knows how it will be done. If these pings they're receiving are confirmed as being from the flight recorders, then they'll triangulate the acoustic data that they have so far, and they'll generate what's called a search box. I don't know how big that'll be, but it might be 25 to 30 miles on a side. It might be a very large piece of ocean. Then there are a suite of tools that can operate at the kind of depth we're talking about. I believe between 4,000 to 5,000 meters. My ultra deep submersible would not be required at those levels. That's half of the level it's designed for. The next step would be to use an AUV, an autonomous underwater vehicle and have it run at 400 or 500 feet above the bottom and do a sonar profile of the bottom 
and it does that by running a search pattern kind of like mowing the lawn and that takes days or weeks to do then you analyze any signatures that are anomalous that don't look like flat bottom and you say are those rocks is that geology or does that look like the piece of an aircraft and then once you have those targets you know where they are on the bottom then you go back either with that type of vehicle or an ROV a remotely operated vehicle that would be hanging down from a ship on a cable and you take a look essentially with a video camera and then you'd be able to identify whether the target was in fact the aircraft you're looking for so that's how it would be done but it all hinges on whether or not those pings are actually from the black box and not from something else like a scientific instrument that's drifted off course or whatever. So that is what they will be doing and that makes logical sense to me to triangulate the pings from the black box. And like I say, they know how many t they can with all the satellites they've got and all the other things that we don't even know what they've got they could have found that by now so the fact that they're putting it out there on the media the way they are you know they know where it's at but it makes for good fodder to keep this going and going and going and going. They might even decide to make it like a like an ear heart and say it was just lost and we never found it. But like I say, if there's a Rothschild involved in some sort of technology that these other people on board, several of them were involved with, I don't think that family is the Sharon type of family. I think that family is a very greedy and controlling and evil family. And something just tells me that they would want the whole pie to themselves. And why wouldn't they take the pie before they got onto the plane? Well, there's a lot of things you can discuss into that why they wouldn't wouldn't just simply do something before these people got onto the plane but maybe that might make some suspicion upon them maybe there's less suspicion whenever you make a whole bunch of people disappear instead of just the workers of the company and the other patent holders but I do believe eventually, I, I, I personally believe eventually they're going to come up with that plane mm -hmm. and it's probably going to be I don't think it'll be in a whole bunch of pieces, I think it'll be in some, but I think there'll be large portions of it that remain intact and then they'll add to the story but I thought it was interesting for Mr. Cameron to be asked this question. I guess they did it just because of his background in submersibles and what. But he's probably given the, the most logical answer uh, of searching under the water that I've, that I've heard. I haven't exactly myself heard this description of it given by anybody on your media. So I just wanted to show everybody that. Have a good day. God bless.